friends and welcome to another Kingdom Kids. I hope you're all doing really well. It's beautiful to see you all with us this morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is. It's great to have you joining in. So, as always, I would love to start this session by hearing from you, hearing what it has been like for you this week. Now, this week, I'm not gonna ask you to show me a specific thing you've been doing or something that you've enjoyed. I'm gonna ask for a general understanding of the kind of week that you have had. Has it been an exciting week? Has it been a boring week? Has it been a fun week? Has it been a sad week? Has it been a week of mystery? I don't know, but you guys are gonna show me through the power of interpretive dance. That's right, we've cycled back round through our mime, our body propping, our shouting things out, we're back at interpretive dance, which means that I'm gonna give you guys maybe like 30 seconds, not even that much, of groovy music, and I'd like you to show me with your body what kind of week it's been. So remember, if it's been a happy week, we can do some boppy dancing, some energetic dancing. If it's been a boring week, maybe some slow dancing. If it's been a week of mystery, maybe some crazy mystery arms. I don't know, you guys, but I'm going to hand over. I'm going to watch excitedly as for the next 20 seconds, we're going to have some groovy music and I am going to watch you dance your socks off. Okay, go now. You guys are so good at your dancing. And I really felt the emotion, the passion, the drama in the moves that you used. So cool, you guys. Thank you for sharing what your week was like with me through the power of movement. Super duper cool, you guys are great. Maybe if you did a particularly great dance or move, you can send me a video of it because I love that sort of thing. And I also know that that is not the only thing that you guys have been doing this week. I have got some pictures that you guys have sent me of what you've been up to. I love seeing those as well. Your videos and pictures always make me smile. Um, so I'm going to show you this week's montage of all the awesome things that you have been doing. So here is, without further ado, some awesome pictures of you. Here we go. <laughs> excited to see all the different stuff that people have been up to. It was really, really groovy, so thank you for sending those to me. Um, I'm going to start the proper part, the main part of our session with a bit of a prayer now, so I hope you are ready for your prayer drill. Super speedy. One, two, three. Uh, dear Father God, just thank you for the week that we have had. I thank you that even if it was a boring week, that if it was a mysterious week, that if it was a fun week, Lord, no matter what kind of week it was, that you um, were in it with us and uh, that you love to spend time with us and, and to, to go through the highs of life and the lows of life with us. Pray that this morning would be a high, that this would be fun and exciting, that we'd have a great time together and that we would learn something more about you. Four. Amen. Okay, guys. This week, we are actually going to do the story, the parable that Jesus told about a woman who, a persistent woman, and she's called the persistent widow. Now, some of you, if you went all the way through the PDF of activities last week, will know that I asked you to read this story last week when we were thinking about justice. And I thought, you know, the persistent woman, the persistent widow story is all about doing things over and over and over again. So I thought we would be persistent 
with the topic of justice. So we are going to be looking at justice again this week and maybe even more, a last little bit of justice next week as well. So we're going to be super knowledgeable and passionate about justice, hopefully by the time we have finished. And um, we're going to be trying to practice persistence this morning during our session. Now, for those of you who don't know what persistence is, persistence is um, like being able to persist in something is be able to keep going at it, to keep doing it as long or as many times as you need to. So persisting at something might mean practicing it over and over again. It might mean asking and asking and asking until you get something. And um, I have got a challenge for you guys this morning. Um, what well, past Charlotte, Charlotte from a couple of hours ago has got a, a bit of a challenge for you this morning um, for during this session. So she is just going to explain that now. So I'm going to hand you over to past Charlotte to give you a bit of a morning challenge. Over you go. Okay, guys, I have got a mega challenge for you this morning that requires great persistence. What you are going to need is you're going to need a pack of cards, and I trust that every household has at least one. So what you can do is pause this video now and go and grab yourself a pack of cards. Pause. Welcome back. Okay, so our challenge is that throughout the session this morning, until I tell you to do something else, until future Charlotte gives you some other jobs to do, is we are going to be working persistently throughout this video to make one of these. Ah, it's a house of cards, guys, and it requires great care and effort and persistence because it's going to break a lot of times. So what you can do is you're going to grab your pack of cards and find yourself a nice flat space. And then, slowly but surely, you're going to carefully balance our cards in little arches. Okay, and we're going to keep doing this and building up. And then again on top. And I'm going to carry on working on mine. I'm going to be persistent until I've done it nice and tall and high. And um, uh, you guys are going to check in with me a couple of times throughout the session to see how I'm getting on building my house of cards. And I trust that you guys will be persistently carrying on. It's going to fall over a load of times. We're going to be persistent. We're going to pick it up. We're going to try again. So I will see you guys at some point later in the video, I'll be here in the past, working away. Here you go. Okay, we'll leave past Charlotte doing her um, house of cards. Hopefully you guys will be doing that as well. Um, but as well as a morning about being persistent, about carrying on, this is also a special morning for well, a special morning in our year and I wonder if any of you guys know what is special about today and about this morning I will give you an opportunity to tell me what is special about it in three two one shout it out yes you're right it is Father's Day so one of the other things that we are going to be doing persistently this morning is remembering that it is Father's Day and to help us do that I have a special guest who's going to come and uh, help us to be persistent in remembering that it is Father's Day. And that is my good friend, Daryl Spiderman. So uh, come on up, Daryl. Oh, good morning. It's me, uh, Daryl Spiderman. Uh, I'm here this morning and I'm going to tell you a little bit about why. Uh, this morning I'm going to come and give you a load of challenges of nice things you're going to go and do for your dad to show him how much you love him at Father's Day. So, yeah, the first thing that you're going to do, your first Father's Day challenge, is to go and find your dad and give him a really big compliment. I want you to say, like, not just one nice thing about your dad, but four nice things about your dad. Maybe you could say, oh, dad, you're so kind to me. Oh, dad, you're so good at football. Oh, Dad, I've never seen anyone eat as many waffles as you do at breakfast time. Actually, maybe that one's not really a compliment, but I ate waffles for breakfast, so that's what I was thinking about. 
But you get the gist. Go find your dad and say four nice things about him to start your Father's Day challenge. So you can pause the video now and go and do that. Off you go. Oh, welcome back. I hope your dad's real, all really enjoyed the compliments that you had for them. I'll be back later with some more Father's Day challenges. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Oh, well, there goes Daryl. Uh, it was a nice little flying visit. But as he says, Daryl is going to be popping back in and out a couple of times during this morning's session to remind us to keep saying thank you to our dads and showing them how much we love them in a load of different ways. But in between his visits, you guys keep going at your houses of cards. Although I say that, we have got something else to do now. And that is our story, which for some of you might be familiar if you did read it last week. Um, but this week I know that uh, Jeremy, of course, is going to want to come and, and read the story to you. Um, and during the story, you might also need to take a break in your house of cards because during the story, there is a little special action that we are going to need you guys to do. But I will leave it to Jez to explain. So um, without further ado, here he is. Here's our main man, Jeremy. Good day, good day. Nice to see you all. I hope you're all doing well this lovely Sunday. Now, we are reading The Unjust Judge today, which is otherwise known as The Persistent Widow, which you guys might have read last week. But to make it a bit more exciting, I've got an action that I would really like you to do. First, what you need to do is find a hiding place. Somewhere you can hide in your room where you can still see the video. Maybe you can hide behind a pillow or behind a chair. And every time you hear the words in the story, there was the widow, you've got to pop out of your hiding place like you're giving someone a big surprise. Okay? And then hide yourself away so that you're hidden for the next time. So, I'll give you a moment to find your hiding place. Five seconds. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and let's go on with the story. Jesus wanted his disciples to know that they should never give up praying to God. So he told them a parable that went something like this. Once there was a judge who wasn't good at giving people justice. He cheated and he lied and he took bribes. His special saying was, I'm not afraid of God and I don't care what people think of me either. In the same town, there lived a widow. When she set her mind on doing something, she never gave up. She was what some of her friends called persistent and what some of her enemies called a pest. Much like the unjust judge, she had a special saying too. I'm not giving up. I'll be back. One day, the widow was cheated out of some money. So she took her problem to the judge, but the judge would not even look at her case because she had no money to give him as a bribe. What was the widow's response? I'm not giving up. I'll be back. So when the judge went out to the marketplace, there was the widow waiting for him. She told him that he had not treated her right. She told him he needed to hear her case, but he refused. I'm not afraid of God, he said, and I don't care what people think of me either. I'm not giving back. Giving up, I'll be back, said the woman. And so she was. When the judge went out for a meal, there was the widow again. She told him he was wrong. She asked him to give her justice. But the judge refused. I'm not afraid of God, he said, and I don't care what people think about me either. I'm not giving up, said the woman. I'll be back. And so it went on. When the judge looked out of his front door, there was the widow. When the judge looked out of his back door, there was the widow too. When the judge headed for the toilet, that's right, there was the widow. She didn't give him a moment's peace. Finally, the judge had had enough. He was fed up with the widow and fed up with her pestering him 
everywhere he went. And so he said to himself, I am not afraid of God, and I don't care what people think of me, but this widow is driving me crazy. And in the end, he gave her what she wanted. If that's how it works with an unjust judge, Jesus told his disciples, how much more will God in heaven give justice to those who cry out to him day and night? So never stop praying. Well, there we go, the story of the persistent widow. Oh, very nicely read there, Jess. Good job this morning. Oh, I hope you all jumped out of your hiding places and scared the people in your house. I imagine the judge must have been scared when he kept finding the widow everywhere he went. Yeah, afraid and a bit annoyed, I think. Oh, aye. But he was so annoyed that he gave her justice. So it was a good kind of annoyed, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose so. Sometimes, you know, being annoying has its benefits, which is lucky for me. Oh, you can see that again. Jez, getting rude this morning. Well, I'm just seeing what I see. Right, well, that's enough from you. You can head back into your story worm burrow for a week, young man. Oh, all right. I'll go and look and study up on my stories for next time. Good idea, Jez. All right, see you next week, buddy. Oh, there he goes. Well, that was a good story. It's one of my favourite stories that Jesus tells. I think it's a really good one for us to think about this morning. But without further ado, let's think of what lessons we can learn for. Good day, it's me, Daryl Spiderman. I'm back again. Daryl, I was just about to teach the guys some lessons from the stories. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, but I've got my second Father's Day challenge. So uh, the second challenge is to go and to find your dad and to give him a drink or a snack. Maybe if he likes to have a chocolate bar for a snack or a biscuit or some crisps or a piece of fruit, you can find one of those things and take it to your dad. Or if he likes a drink that you can give him safely, like water or squash or some juice, you can take him one of those so that he knows that you are really appreciating him for Father's Day. Okay, you can pause the video and go and find your dad a snack or a drink to say thank you for being such a great dad now. All right, did you do it? Did you like it? Good job, guys, good job. It's important to show our dads that we really love them on Father's Day. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, good job. You are being a very persistent in appearing and giving these challenges. So persistent that you cut me off mid-thought. Oh, and you know what? I'm not even finished yet. I've got some more for later. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Whew. Well, gosh, so much is going on this morning. I hope you guys are keeping up, because I'm certainly not. Um, we're just going to have a little bit of a chat about some lessons we can find from that story now, but maybe you can use this time to once again be practising your persistence with your houses of cards. I wonder how past Charlotte is getting on with her house of cards at the moment. Let's have a look back in time and see. It's okay. Persistence is key. It's fine. Keep going. Persistence is key. Persistence is key. It's not going well for past Charlotte. In fact, I remember what it was like being past Charlotte, and it was difficult to be persistent but we carried on with great determination. And um, that, is a, that is the really big lesson in that parable, isn't it? To keep going and keep asking for things to be put right. And um, you remember we were thinking about justice last week. And actually, persistence is really important 
for us to remember when we're trying to bring justice to people. Because a lot of the time, the problems that we see aren't fixed by saying something once. It's really good when they are. Those are the best problems when we just say, this is wrong, and someone listens and fixes it. But sometimes we have to keep asking again and again and again. Particularly when there is something that is unjust that people just do out of habit. They just keep doing it all the time. We need to keep saying over and over again, this is wrong. And eventually, if we keep working together and we keep pushing for justice, then things will change just like they did for the widow in the story. She kept going and she kept going because she knew it was wrong and she knew it was worth fighting for and worth persisting. And eventually that paid off. So that's a really important lesson for us to know, not to give up if things don't seem to get fixed quickly. Sometimes it takes time and persistence. And actually that's good, a really good skill for us to practice that you guys are practicing now with your houses of cards. And I think that's another interesting lesson, isn't there? Right at the very end of the, of the story, Jesus says, you know, um, if, that is, if an unjust person, if, so, if someone who's doing things wrong gives us what we want if we ask over and over again, what about someone who does things right? How much good stuff will they give if we keep asking? So that's about, about going to God and saying to God, please give us the things that we need. Please fix the things that we see are broken. And it says that, you know, humans sometimes take loads of time to fix things, but God isn't like us. You know, he, he doesn't want to hold on to things for his own good. He's not unjust. So when we go to him, we know that he will, he will listen and he gives us good things. So it's really important not just to speak out against injustice, not just to keep going, but also to be talking to God about it and to be praying to God to start fixing things as well. Because we know that when he gets involved, things change. So those are some thoughts for us. Interesting thought, and I bet that you guys have seen have some other thoughts about what we can learn from that that story too. I wonder what lessons you guys can think of that I might have missed, because I bet there are lots. And you guys always see things differently, which is absolutely brilliant and amazing. So maybe just have a think for a moment about what other lessons we could learn from that story. See, you guys always have really, really good ideas. See, so yeah, those are some of our thoughts. And I hope that your towers of cards are going better than past Charlotte's, that you are persevering as well, even if they're not going well, guys. Keep going, because that's the most important thing. Right, I think it's about time for us to crack on with our one minute move. Okay, so this week our one minute move is going to be Good day, it's me, I'm back again. Oh, Daryl, again, you're interrupting me again. Yep, that's right, I'm being persistent in reminding you that it is Father's Day and we need to be showing how much we love our dids. So, it's time for challenge number three. Now you need to pause the video and go and give your dad a hug. A really big hug. A really long hug. A really tight hug. A bear hug. Alright? So, you can pause the video now and go and give your dad a big hug. Go, go, go! Oh, welcome back. Did your dad like his hug? I bet he did. Dads love hugs. My dad used to love my hugs too, but you know, I haven't seen him for a while. I'm going to go and visit him later and see him and we're going to stay two metres apart. So I'll have to give him an air hug this year. But it'll be good to see him anyway. Right, I'm off. Good job. Keep remembering that it is Father's Day and dads do a good job. I'll see you in a bit. Goodness me, Daryl is full of energy this morning. Good job, Daz. Okay, I hope you are full of energy this morning because it is time for a one minute move. Here we go. So, I have to admit, there's not that much moving involved in this minute's one minute move, this morning's one minute move, because it is once again all about persistence. And we are going to do something that requires persistence. It's an exercise that requires us to keep going and hold on. And it is one that I have made some of you do before. And sometimes you say to me, Goodness, Charlotte, I hope you never make us do that again. Well, today's the day where I'm gonna. So what we're gonna do is for a minute, is just hold your arms out like a big T. 
Got to keep them all the way out like a big T for the whole minute. Okay? It's harder than you think. See if you can get your parents to join in as well. I know it's Father's Day, but let's get your dad's arms aching. Here we go. You ready for your one minute move? We are starting now. It starts easy, guys. You think, what an incredibly easy task to keep my arms out. But I tell you, give it 30 seconds and you're gonna be like, man, it is hard to be a giant T. I wonder how your card towers are looking. I wonder if you've managed to get any arches. Maybe, maybe you haven't got any cards standing up at all. You know what? That is fine. As past Charlotte discovered, it is a very hard thing to do, to do a big house of cards. But all we're really thinking about is just having a practice and having a try and learning to keep going and keep going, even if at first it doesn't look super duper easy. Now, you guys are doing a great job of persisting with keeping your arms out. And to make it a question of extra persistence, we're not gonna stop after one minute. Oh no, today we're doing two. Here we go, keep those arms up. You're halfway through your time. And if you're anything like me, here at the halfway point, your arms will be starting to get tired. But you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna persist and we're gonna endure because we are strong, we are mighty, we are Bildricky Baptist Church. Let's not keep that as a slogan. That's a bit weird. I don't know, I always feel like I have to keep talking all the way through these things and two minutes is too long for me to just keep talking. Oh. I'm gonna try and be quiet for now. You guys say something instead. I'll listen. Are your arms tired yet? I'm oh, starting to get tired. Maybe we should do three minutes. Maybe we should do three minutes. Three whole minutes of this. That would start getting difficult. Maybe I'll flip it over again. I'm not going to really. I'm not going to really. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. You can stop your hands. I hope they were starting to get a bit achy there towards the end. I hope you, and I hope you all managed the two minutes. But if you didn't, don't worry. You gave it a try. And that is what matters. So it is about the time when we would normally be doing our psalm. But today we're not going to read a whole psalm. What I've got is just a couple of verses from the Bible for you. Now I'm going to read these out. In fact, I'm going to read them out twice because I think if we hear things twice sometimes that helps us think about it more and to understand it a bit better the second time than we did the first time so I'm going to read this twice and I want you guys to have a little think about what you think it might mean and what you think God might be trying to say to you this morning through these bible verses and while I'm doing that you know what you can go back to you know what you can keep persisting in that's right that old house of cards I know you guys are probably really enjoying that, but yeah, you can keep trying on that while I read these out to you. So just listen and see what you think God might be trying to say to us through these verses this morning. Um, these verses, if you want to find them in your own Bible later, this is Hebrews 12, uh, verses 1, 2, 3. So it's just three verses. I'm going to read them twice. Here we go. Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people and then you won't become weary and give up. Okay, I'm going to read it a second time. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, 
the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then he won't become weary and give up. Here you go, guys. I wonder what you think we can learn from that Bible verse and what it might have to do with uh, the other thoughts we've had this morning. I'm not going to tell you what I think, because actually sometimes it's really important for you and God to work things out between you, because he'll tell you things that he never tells me, because God has different things to say to each of us. Now, I wonder how you are doing with your house of cards. Maybe as we come to the end of our session this morning, we'll check in with past Charlotte one more time to see how she is getting on with her house of cards. Persistence and optimism. How are you guys getting on? Are you building beautiful houses of cards? I've made this. It's been 28 minutes. my tower 40 minutes in it does not look like the picture of what we we're trying to achieve but I know that I have persisted I've practiced persistence and that is important and you know it didn't work out this time but maybe next time I try it will but it's an important skill to learn to keep trying and trying and trying when we see something is wrong and not just and you know there are things in life that are more important than a house of cards and those are the things where persistence will pay off over to future charlotte okay so it turns out that past charlotte really struggled with this challenge. And I'm sorry for her lack of enthusiasm there, to give me a little message at the end. Turns out, after 40 minutes, she was starting to lose enthusiasm and excitement about that what seemed like a really good idea when she started. But it turns out, how, how, like, houses of cards are really difficult. So you know what, guys, if you have persisted and you've kept trying, well done. I'm so proud of you. You have done brilliantly. And it turns out there are things in life that are much more important to be persistent in that are probably a bit easier to be persistent in as well. But really good try. And if any of you managed to actually have like a house of cards, you are wizards. How incredible. You must have amazing powers. Please take a picture and show me because I'll be mega impressed. That is pretty much the end of our session today. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to finish with a prayer. So prayer drill, here we go. One, two, three. Dear Father God, um, we just thank you that you are a good God and we thank you for the time we have had together this morning. And um, we pray, Lord, that you would show us the things where we need to be persistent the injustices that we need to keep pointing out and keep fighting against and keep being persistent in. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will make it, that you will give us the strength to be persistent and to keep going even when it is hard. And um, Father, we thank you that you are just and that when we ask you for things, when we are persistent in coming to you, you love to give us what is good and right. So help us to be persistent, not only in calling out and fighting injustice, Lord, but also in coming to you in prayer. Um, we pray, Lord, that you just be with us this week, keep us safe, and bring us back together next time. In Jesus' name we say, for Amen. 
Oh, good job, you guys. You have done such a brilliant, fabulous job today. I'm so impressed. I can't wait to see what you get up to this week. And um, as always, after the session, you can find our PDF, which has got some worship songs on. They might be thinking a bit about Father's Day. They might be just having a bit of a groove, thinking about how great God is. But those are always really good to check out and have a bit of a dance and a bit of a sing-along too. And we have also got, as always, the PDF with some more activities. And I have to tell you, it's a bit different this week. Because we've been thinking about persistence, there are some challenges for you to be persisting and keeping going in this week. So if you're feeling up for a challenge, you can find those on the PDF this week. And I believe that is about it for us in the session this morning. So without further ado, go out, have a fabulous week and enjoy your Father's Day. And um, I guess I'll see you next. It's me, Daryl Spiderman. Yeah, I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me, but no, I've got one last challenge. I want you to serenade your dads to finish Kingdom Kids this morning. Serenade, Daz? I don't think these guys even know what the word serenade means. Oh, you don't know what serenade means? Serenade means sing to someone. Go, find your dads, sing them a beautiful song. It's going to be amazing. They're going to be touched. They're going to be blown away by your incredible musical skills. Daryl, this is a bit of a weird one. It's a bit of a weird one, but I can see you've thought it through. So I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you from doing this. Um, Guys, I guess when the video finishes this morning, you're going to have to go and sing your dads a song. Uh, What what song are they singing, Daryl? Uh... I don't know, just like any song. I guess a nice song. Maybe you could sing like a happy birthday to your dad. I mean, I know it's probably not his birthday. It might be. But I guess Father's Day is like all dad's birthdays. Like a special dad birthday day. I don't know. Just uh, sing a really nice song to your dad. Let him know that you love him. Sing your heart out. Sing, sing, sing. Okay, Daryl. We get it. We get it, Daryl. Guys, you get it, right? Your last challenge is to go and to sing to your dads as we come to an end this Kingdom Kids morning. And um, I think you've done a great job of being persistent in reminding that it, us that it's Father's Day. Well, good, because, you know, I love Father's Day and I love dads. And, you know, I love other people in the house as well so if you don't have your dad with you and you might have a granddad or someone else who's just like a cool person in your house you can sing to them instead it's great to sing okay daryl you've got a new passion now and we're running out of time Uh, but good job i hope you guys accept the final challenge from daz and um we'll see you next time yeah have a good day all right see you guys bye